Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. V. Mohan, and I'm very happy to talk to all of you uh, today. At the outset, let me wish you and your family uh, all the very best to remain safe during this very dangerous period uh, that we are passing through. COVID-19, especially the second wave, has not been very good as far as India is concerned. As we speak, we have the largest number of cases and the largest number of deaths in the whole world. And when the first wave came, uh, the whole world is looking at us and saying, why is India uh, you know, escaping? And what is that uh, which is unique in India? Today, the whole table is turned and they're asking, why is India doing so badly? Um, so one of the reasons why COVID-19, among many, many other reasons, one of the most important reasons why people do badly with COVID-19 ever since the first cases were reported from Wuhan and China is because of the presence of comorbidities. Of course, older age group is one, but diabetes and particularly uncontrolled diabetes is a very important reason. You all know that. If you look at the overall death rates, it is at least two to three times higher in those with uncontrolled diabetes. If you look at those who go on to ventilators, ICUs, poor outcomes, uh, all that is more in people uh, with uncontrolled diabetes. Somewhere by August, September of last year, steroids came to be used uh, in the treatment of severe COVID reactions, what we call as the hyperinflammatory response or the COVID storm. This is what kills people. And of course, we all know that steroids are life saving in any life saving situation. The BP is dropping or any severe inflammation or reaction or anything anaphylactic reaction. The first thing we do is to give steroid because that's a life saving thing. So the recovery trial in the U in the UK showed that people, uh, you know, their uh, mortality rates come down uh, even with severe uh, end stage kind of COVID thing. Also, they recover when the steroids are given. But what happened was maybe because of uh, you know, indiscriminate use of steroids or prolonged use of steroids or high doses of steroids being used and probably because of uncontrolled diabetes and so on, this has led to a new problem in India, as we know, and that's mucormycosis. It's a very deadly, serious uh, type of fungus. We all know fungus infections, mild fungus infection on your tongue or lips or or something like that, white, small white patches. We also know about little fungal infection in the genital areas, again, due to candida. Just put some ointment and it'll go away. These are all minor fungus infections, but there are severe ones like mucormycosis, aspergillosis. These are all life-threatening fungus infections. If they get in, uh, it can be deadly. And this mucormycosis is something we've all seen one or two cases in our lifetime. We've never seen it. But this round uh, of the second wave, it's come like an epidemic. It's, I mean, 12,000 cases already reported in India, unheard of in the probably last 50 years, we have not seen that many cases. So something went wrong. And I believe that uh, whenever you look at the series of cases that have been reported from India, 95% of them have uncontrolled diabetes. So to me, uh, you know, uh, every governmental agency, uh, every scientist, everybody who writes about it, say that those with uncontrolled diabetes fare badly if they have COVID-19. It's a kind of given now. Nobody is even arguing against that. About mucormycosis, everybody says uncontrolled diabetes, top of the list, number one, you know. And the few who have not uh, got diabetes, very few have not got diabetes, they weren't treated with steroids and so on. Of course, the actual cause may be different. And I'm just hypothesizing it could be the humidifier, the water use may not be good, the hygiene, uh, people giving oxygen in the street and in auto rickshaws and all that probably is adding on. We don't know. We really don't know. Mask, you know, somebody was saying, can it be the mask? You know, it's wet and that's where the fungus can grow and you're putting it right over the nose and they don't wash it properly. They reuse it all the time. And can that be a cause? I don't know. We're just thinking aloud. I'm just talking this so that the public health experts can pick it up. I'm not a public health expert. So people can pick up all these clues and say, where is the loophole which we can plug? But to me, as a diabetologist, the answer is actually quite simple. If we are hearing that uncontrolled diabetes is the cause for people to do, uh, to get worse outcomes, increase morbidity, mortality after COVID-19, number one. And number two, if mucormycosis is uh, predominantly seen in people with uncontrolled diabetes, and this keeps coming in the papers and newspapers, it comes in the 
uh, press and the media and online and social media and everywhere. But I was very surprised the other day, you know, and I was just thinking about it. Everybody talks about this uncontrolled diabetes, but who's talking about controlling the diabetes? Isn't that the logical conclusion? We have uncontrolled diabetes, control it, fix the problem. Nobody seems to be talking about that. So uh, about a week ago, it suddenly dawned on me. We were having a discussion about people doing home glucose testing. I was talking in a webinar. Suddenly, in like a flash, it came to me and I said, why aren't we doing something to stop the epidemic? See, something if you have like an epidemic, something is spreading. You have to cut it. You have to produce a break. That's the whole principle of the lockdown, isn't it? Why do you have a lockdown? Because you're not allowing the, uh, the virus to spread. You're giving a break. So if you want to break the severity of the COVID-19 and you want to break the mucormycosis, and if you accept that uncontrolled diabetes is the most important reason or at least one of the most important reasons, what are we doing about it? We're doing nothing about it. And therefore, I said, this is not right. Having found this out, we must now put this into action. So just like a flash, it came to me. Why not make the next month, uh, June 2021, we declare it as the diabetes control month, it's like declaring a war against diabetes. Of course, we're not fighting anyone. We're not killing anyone. Uh, I'm generally a very peaceful person. But you have to have a war against something. A war against COVID is fine because you have to get rid of the virus and get on with our lives. Similarly, if the bad effects of COVID is going to come and is going to kill people, and especially people with diabetes are going to get affected, I think it's our duty to inform people, hey, if your diabetes is not under control, what, what are you doing about it? Why don't we now work together and bring this diabetes under control? Now, how do we know whether diabetes is under control or not? Now, half the people with diabetes don't even know that they have the disorder. This is very well known. In India, if you take, we talk about 70 million people having diabetes, 80 million people having diabetes in India. You know what? 40 million don't even know that they have it. They're walking about without knowing. Is it possible? Of course, it's possible. In a chronic disease, until it becomes very severe or, uh, you know, reaches a very serious stage, uh, you're not going to get symptoms. So don't wait for symptoms as far as diabetes is concerned. So number one, since we have so much of uncontrolled diabetes, undiagnosed diabetes, not uncontrolled, come to uncontrolled later, undiagnosed diabetes, can we do something to diagnose diabetes? Now, how do we do that? I can't stand in the road and say, come, 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 all of you come and do blood tests. Of course, you can do that if you have the wherewithal to do it. Uh, but during lockdown and so on, is it possible to go to you know people and then say, come on for blood test and so on? They, they may get scared. They may not even come near you. But there are people going to clinics to hospitals with various conditions, COVID, non-COVID, all kinds of things are going to hospital. Remember that relatives also accompany these people. And half of those relatives also may be having diabetes without knowing about it. So my first suggestion is to find out this undiagnosed diabetes in the community. Why not every clinic, every healthcare provider, every doctor, every hospital, every dispensary, which is treating people? For any condition, let it be fever, let it be COVID, let it be uh, jaundice, let it be uh, malaria, let it be anything, you know, hypertension or heart disease or strokes or you name it, any disease that people are treating. Somebody is going to come to hospital. How do we know that person doesn't have diabetes? So why don't we include glucose as the fifth vital sign? Just like when somebody comes to hospital, you check the fever, whether the fever is there or not, isn't it? Number two, we'll check the pulse, we check the blood pressure, we check the respiratory rate, all those things we are doing. The fifth vital sign should be glucose. After all this, okay, now let's check your glucose. You'll be surprised how many new cases are picked up. When we do diabetes camps and so on, sometimes a VIP will come, a minister or somebody. And as you're showing him around, he'll say, oh, okay, 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 check my sugar also. And when they check the sugar, his sugar will be 400, you know. My sugar 400, I just came to inaugurate this thing and I, I don't have diabetes, sir. Apparently, you seem to have. You won't believe it. Get another glucometer. Do another one, that also 400. Then he'll say, sir, two glucometers cannot be wrong, no? Get me a third one. I'm not convinced. Then third one also shows. Oh, I have diabetes. And how is it I'm not having symptoms, sir? That's a problem with diabetes, sir. It's a silent disease. That's why we're having this camp in the first place. That's why we called you in the first place. If everybody had symptoms, there's no need for camps and there's no need to go screening. So my first message is identify people with undiagnosed diabetes. Why? If you don't diagnose these people with uncontrolled diabetes, if suppose they get COVID, 
they'll be given a lot of steroid and the, when they go to the hospital do you have diabetes oh no diabetes okay now let's pump him with steroid when you pump him with steroid he's already having diabetes the problem is he doesn't know about it so if you detect people with diabetes then they'll of course first they may not even accept it then later on they'll accept it like the minister whom i told you about and then you, you can get the sugars under control now imagine if thousands of people the sugars are kept under control like that then the covid 19 will not produce such bad thing isn't it so first thing is diagnose uncontrolled diabetes number two uh, diagnose uh, uh, diagnose undiagnosed diabetes that's the first point number two people come and tell you yes i've got diabetes so he knows it's not undiagnosed anymore he knows it's called self reported diabetes now if you ask that person when did you last check your sugar i don't check it i'm doing well you know i am doing absolutely well all this crazy thing if you keep on checking then you'll get paranoid you know so you should not check well if you don't check you may have problems your sugar may go very high you may land in complications and you may not know so checking for diabetes is part and parcel of your diabetic life and therefore you have to keep checking the frequency of checking can vary person with insulin dependent type 1 diabetes might check five times a day six times a day seven times a day three times a day but every day they have to check person with type 2 diabetes on insulin may check once or twice a day person who is on uh, type 2 diabetic but not on insulin but on tablets may check twice a week twice a week somebody may check two three times a month but some checking is needed if you don't check is like you're an ostrich you're putting your head under the sand and you're saying nobody can see me that's what the ostrich does you know the moment when the enemy comes it'll put its head under the sand and say now nobody can see me and the big body sitting there it thinks nobody can see so diabetes is like that is like the tip of the iceberg you're seeing only the last part there you're not seeing the big problem there so by looking at your sugars and even the sugar itself is only one of the indicators those who have sugar also have cholesterol also have bp also have this also have that i also have albuminuria they have so many things but first thing at least look at your sugar and get your sugars under control so i would encourage every person with diabetes during this covid time please increase the testing with your own glucometer whichever glucometer you have at home please check it a few times check your before food sugar keep them all between say 100 to 110 120 we keep it within that range it's a safe range after food let's say it can be between 120 to 160 so one or two may go here or there but majority of your after food sugars should be under control and that for the that's my second thing please increase both your before food and after food testing at home with glucometer and try to keep your sugars under control while you're doing that check it at different times of the day some people check in the morning alone my fasting and after breakfast are okay rest of the time they think there is no sugar but sugar is actually a dynamic thing it's going up and down throughout the day and therefore please also check your after lunch or your after dinner or in the evening or at any other time so that throughout the day all the before foods are under control and after all the after foods are under control number 3 when did you last get your hba1c test done this is the gold standard this is what actually decides whether you are at higher risk or not as you know the normal hba1c is below 5.6 non diabetic person between say 5.7 and 6.4 is what you call as pre diabetic individual this for a undiagnosed person is testing it for the first time above 6.5 is considered to be di- diabetes now for people with diabetes especially the chronic diabetic people we say up to 7 is okay it's like a concession we are giving you saying up to 7 is okay not that 7 is perfect 5.6 is normal but you still saying all right up to 7 is okay because most of the studies have shown that up to 7 you don't get any complications of diabetes like eye disease or kidney disease or heart disease and so on all get reduced if your a1c is below 7% but what if your a1c is 11% or 10% if you don't check it you will not know okay you may say but last year i checked it last year you checked it but in two months your hbnc can go out of control again something would have come some infection would have come covid itself increases the blood sugar in so many ways due to stress due to uh, faulty eating due to a lockdown not going for exercise and the covid can actually go and damage your beta cells as well and bring down insulin secretion so all these are possible and because of that your hbnc which was under control may not be under control every single day we have many many patients coming to us saying that up to march my sugars were fine in march i got covid after that my sugars are never under control 
for many reasons. Number one, they could have been given steroids. Number two, it could be the stress. It could be the medicines which are given for COVID. Some of them which can increase the sugar apart from steroid. But there are many, many reasons. COVID itself going and damaging your pancreas. So many things can happen. The virus itself can damage your pancreas. So for many of these reasons, even if you are under good control, now you may not be under good control. And if you're not under good control now, this is the time when you can get mucormycosis and all that. Okay. So irrespective of whether your sugar was good or bad in the past, forget about it. Start with a new slate now. Today is June 1st. And from June 1st onwards, I will see that my sugars are kept under control. I will see that my HbA1c is brought down to 7%. Every Indian, you know, if you can get the A1c down to 7%, then we will not have any problem at all. COVID will come, COVID will go. There will be no mucormycosis. It will all go away, okay, if you control your diabetes well. And therefore, don't forget to get your HbA1c done. Well, I did it only two, three months back. So what? Do it now. Now is the time you have to do this is an emergency situation. So get it done again. Ensure that you are under good control. Nothing wrong in doing, repeating your A1C in once in every two or three months. In fact, it's meant to be repeated every two, three months. Go for it. Go and get it done in a good, reliable lab and see that it's kept under good control. Now, there is a new thing called as time and range. Time and range is a new concept. I've spoken about it so many times. So time and range. The fasting and postman blood sugar tells you that instant what was your blood sugar. Okay. It's like a snapshot. Now, if you take a snap of me now, I'm sitting like that. You'll get a picture of Dr. Mohan. Okay. But you can't see me gesticulating. You can't see me talking. You can't hear me. You can't do anything. But in a video, you can do all that, isn't it? So if you have something called as continuous glucose monitoring, CGM for short, continuous glucose monitoring. You can do it. There are many two, three companies that make it, but one small patch is there. You just put it on your hand like that, stick it there, and it will stay there for two weeks and it will continuously record your blood sugars throughout the day and night, throughout the day and night. So when you eat, it will go up. Then afterwards, it will come down. The whole thing can be recorded. You don't have to poke, 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 poke 20 times a day to get all the record. Even if you poke 20 times a day, you'll get only 20 readings. Here, you're getting 100 readings without a single poke. Imagine how good it is. From that, today a new metric has come and that metric is called TIR or time and range. So what does it mean? Your lower limit should not go below 70. Your upper limit of sugar should not go above 180. And you can set these different targets for different people. Pregnancy is different. For old people, you can loosen it a little bit. But average is 70. It should not go below that and it should not go above 180. So if it is between 70 to 180 within that particular range, it's called time and range. <clears throat> OK, suddenly it went up a little while, but only for half an hour. OK, so 23 hours, 23 and a half hours, you're under control. Your time and range will come as 90 percent, 95 percent under control. Out of the 24 hours, what time and range means is how many hours are you under control? If 17 hours you are under control, you get 70 percent under control, 17 hour 20. 24 and you multiply it and you'll get 70% under control. It's been worked out that if you have 70% of time and range or TIR, 70%, 17 hours you're under control, your HbA1c will come to around 7% and therefore you're protected. A normal person who has HbA1c of 5.6 will have 100, 100 out of 100 or 98, 99 out of 100, it will be under control. If it goes below also, it is called time below range or TBR. If it goes above 180, it's called TAR or time above range. So you can have time in range, time above range, and time below range. You, we don't want very much to go below also. We don't want it to go high also. We want it to be within that range, and that's called time in range. If you've not had your sensor put on your arm, it's painless, and it's just for two weeks, not very expensive. You put it there, and for two weeks, you can get 1,400 readings. 100 readings a day into 14 days, 1,400 readings. If you put it once is enough, okay? And then you get that complete graph, you know, time and range day by day by day, and it'll give you for the whole one week and for two weeks, what is the time and range? It'll tell you everything. If you get your time and range at 70% or above, you're safe. It's like a HPNC below 7%. So today, remember, there are four things you can do to control, to assess your control. Number one is your own glucometer readings, where you can check before food and after food sugars. You can see your HbA1c, and, and that also you can do number two. You can do that throughout the day to see whether you're fasting before lunch, uh, after lunch, 
uh, before dinner, after dinner, all that can be number two throughout the day. Number three is your HbA1c test, which you're seeing the average for three months. And number four is your time and range. Okay. All these four are parameters to assess your diabetes control. And I will put it to you that if all these four are under control, people with diabetes don't have to be afraid about COVID-19 or for that matter, about any other complication, acute infections, tuberculosis, urinary infection, gallbladder infection, kidney infection, liver infection, liver, anything in the body, if you name it, any other pneumonia, bronchitis, any infection anywhere in the body can be controlled or eliminated completely if your sugar is under control. Number two, it's not just for the infections alone, but to protect your vascular system, your blood vessels in the body, which are of two types. One is the small blood vessels, which affect the eye, the kidney and the nerves. And then you have the large blood vessels affect the brain, the heart and the feet. If the feet is affected, you get gangrene. The heart is affected, you get heart attack. If the brain is affected, you get strokes. Those three can be avoided if you keep these four parameters under control. Then eye, kidney, nerves, I said. So retinopathy, blindness, kidney failure, when the kidney gets affected, or the nerves, loss of sensation or loss of blood circulation to the feet, leading to amputations, legs getting cut off and so on. All these deadly things we hear about in people with diabetes. But guess what? We have equal number of them who are living up to 80, 90, 95, 100 years of age, who have nothing. They've had diabetes for 50, 60 years. They have gone through without any problems. These are people who have maintained their sugars under good control. Not for one day, not for two days, but for 50 years, 60 years. They kept it under control. We have proved that people can live up to 100 years of age without having any complications whatsoever. Now, I know that uh, this is an odd time that I'm speaking today. Normally, I speak in the evenings, but if you have any questions, uh, please uh, keep uh, asking them, and I'll be more than happy to uh, answer uh, your questions. Uh, but I would like to uh, you know, uh, spend some time uh, talking to you all and clearing your doubts. The reason why I'm doing this in the morning today uh, and not in the evening is because uh, I wanted to launch this on uh, June 1st. Uh, the Hindu paper has already published it, declare June as uh, the diabetes control month. What I just said, it's been published. We are also putting it in all the social media. I've made some videos on YouTube, which will be coming today. And throughout, many associations have taken it up. The Association of, Phys uh, of Physicians of uh, the, uh, the American, uh, you know, Association of uh, Physicians, American College of uh, Physicians, ACP, uh, Dr. Anuj Maheshwari has taken this up on a big uh, scale. And he is actually making it a national movement. I know that many colleagues of mine in different parts of the country have joined this clarion call, which I have given. And in their respective states, they have taken up the diabetes control month. I want all of you to spread this message. If you have family, friends, WhatsApp circles everywhere, keep pushing this message. It's for public interest. OK, I want everybody to have their sugar under control. Never before, I think such a thing has been attempted in this country. And I would like this to become like a mass movement. Everybody talking about controlling their diabetes well and all in the interest of preventing the complications currently due to COVID and, of course, in the future due to other complications as well. And I'm very confident that those who do it uh, can prevent these uh, complications. I, I know that there was one question which came, but it seemed to have gone very fast. Um, if somebody can type this here, I would be happy to take uh, questions. Cynthia, will you be able to? Okay, here's uh, Benson Sajeev. Is there any reason for glaucoma or pressures are below 20? Is it required to continue with drops? Uh, Benson Sajeev, uh, I'm not a specialist. I'm not an eye doctor, nor am I a specialist for glaucoma. Uh, but from what you understand, from what you have said now, normally a thing is below 17. My wife is an ophthalmologist. So a little bit I've heard about glaucoma. So I believe below 17, the pressures are, are meant to be. But glaucoma is not just intraocular pressure alone. Glaucoma is a slightly different disease. Earlier, they thought it was only intraocular pressure, which is glaucoma. Glaucoma has other aspects to it. Please consult your doctor. 
some of these diseases, uh, you know, you need to continue the medication. People ask me, now my cholesterol has come down, can I stop my statin? Your cholesterol has come down because of your statin. If you stop your statin, you see what will happen, it will go very high. So certain, uh, I've, now my HbA1c is normal, can I stop medicines? Unless you get low sugar symptoms, you cannot stop your anti-diabetic drugs. And it's not nothing wrong in it to continue it. You have a disease and the disease is now controlled well, I'd like to call it as a disorder rather than a disease. You got a disorder, for that disorder, we've given you something, now it's under control. Try reducing it and see whether it is still maintaining. If you're able to reduce it, well and good. Some people can reduce it. If your body doesn't need it, it will give you symptoms. It will tell you some hypoglycemia will start coming, low sugar. Then you know that, oh, yeah, I'm taking too much insulin, I'm taking too much tablet. Body will not keep quiet. If body is keeping quiet, it means everything is fine. You have, you have got it under good control. Plus, you got objective measures to check the sugars or check the cholesterol or check everything. So regarding your pressures, please talk to your eye doctor and they'll be able to tell you. Are there other questions? Ah, Sharmila Shigamani, taking insulin injection longer period lead to problem in the kidney. Um, I think that was a statement you're making, leads to problem in the kidney. Sharmila, I would like you to show me one case in whom it happened. I have seen 5 lakh patients myself and about 50 years I've been in this field. I have not seen it. I have not seen. In fact, insulin is a lifesaver. This year happens to be the 100th year of insulin, by the way. And for those of you who didn't know about it, 100 years ago, if you had a child, if you were born 100 years ago, let's say in 1917 you were born or 1915 you were born and you had type 1 diabetes, you would have died in three months time if you are lucky. If you're very, very lucky, you may live for a year or a year and a half. Nobody lived beyond that. Everybody died. Every child with type 1 diabetes died. And like today, COVID deaths, you used to have children dying, 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 and then going away. All that changed in the summer of 1921, exactly 100 years ago, exactly, because it was in May that the experiments of Banting and Best started. By June, they were making their discoveries. By July of 1921, they announced it. And then the very next uh, year in January, the first human trials were given six months after the discovery. And then the production of insulin started. And by 1923, the Nobel Prize for medicine was given. And the Nobel Committee said that this is one of the greatest advances ever seen in the field of medicine. So that is insulin. It's now been there for 100 years now, therefore, OK, 99 years after the commercial production, 100th year after the discovery. In these 100 years, we have not seen anybody develop kidney problem due to insulin. It's a myth. It's a myth. It's fake news. These are all people who start off, uh, you know, some uh, unknown guy just starts something and then people say, oh, kidney, kidney, kidney due to insulin. Uh, Sharmila, please show me five cases of, uh, of you, that you know uh, whose kidney failed due to diabetes and I'll quit my practice. I'll stop practicing. I'll become a sannyasi and I'll go and do yoga or something okay uh, so it, it's not correct you know so to uh, to blame something when it is not there especially when it's a life-saving thing it's it's what has saved millions and millions of lives of people it's something produced in the body what we're giving is what is produced in the body when there's a deficiency we are it's like saying current is not there if you send current to this will something happen current is needed for the light uh, to be there and that's why and your life depends on if you think of water food water oxygen Okay, can you live without all that? Can you live without food? Can you live without water? Can you live without oxygen? You can't. Okay, so if you take oxygen, you your kidney will get damaged if you say, or you drink water, your kidney will get damaged, or if you eat food, your kidney will get damaged. Can you believe it? Similarly, if you take insulin, how can your kidney get damaged? So what is produced by body? Something is needed for you, and therefore nothing will happen to you if you take it. Okay. There are other medicines. I'm not saying that all medicines will not produce. So there are medicines which uh, can, you have to be careful about certain medicine. But the anti-diabetic drugs are by and large generally safe. There's a comment here, I'm 62, diabetic for 8 years, HbA1c 6.7 now, 6.6, glycophage, tandia, fasting, get drowsy, weakness, 4 a.m. Um, well, I cannot give individual consultations here uh, without knowing you. I have not seen you. I have not seen your records. I don't know your history. Uh, we'll have to check when you're saying 4 a.m. something is happening. Check your sugar at 4 a.m. to see whether any low sugar is occurring. If low sugar is occurring, perhaps we'll have to reduce the dose of the medicines. If you write to me uh, uh, as an email, I'll, I'll give you my email ID at the end. And if you write to me, I maybe I'll be able to help. 
Um, Colonel Ar Arun Mal Malotra, hello, Colonel. How are you? Can the CGM monitor be connected to computers to enable patient to save data for future? Yes, it can. Today, there are many software uh, by which Colonel Malotra, we can uh, actually connect the uh, the uh, CGM devices uh, to not only to your computer, but also to your cell phone. So sitting here, you can see your own blood sugar. Uh, you can actually send it uh, through telemetry to somewhere else. You can send it to your doctor. All kinds of technology is, is now uh, coming. Uh, so CGM devices can definitely uh, be uh, connected not only to your computer, but uh, to your phone. You can send it by WhatsApp. You can send the images. You can do all kinds of things. Some of the CGM devices, the software may or may not be available, uh, but it's, it's all coming and people are using it on a daily, let me put it that way. They're they are using it on a daily basis, it's become part of their life. Before they go to eat, they'll check their sugars, like checking your time now. I can check my time, say it's 12.01 p.m. So like I can check my, oh, my sugar's 84. Okay, it's all right. I'll have uh, my food. Oh, it's 56. Oh, I better go and eat something fast. It's going down. So we can, those wearable devices, what is called as Gluco Watch, also came. Technology didn't work so well. In a hot climate, you sweat and you get a thing. But so it's not like just seeing your watch. But the other ones that you wear here, you can actually uh, take your uh, reader to that. They have a small reader, like about half the size of this phone. That's how the reader will look like. So you just get the reader, take it in your, in your arm, and you can see the reading immediately. So there is no problem about it at all. Uh, so Devan is asking, how many times should we call our patient to scan CGM during the two weeks? It's left to you. See, there are different types of CGM. One is what is called as a retrospective CGM. And in that retrospective CGM, you can just put the sensor. I sometimes uh, send the patient away to Calcutta or Dubai or, or somewhere. And after two weeks, they courier it to us. And then we scan it, find out the entire two weeks thing and then tell them oh, on this day you didn't have under control now it's under control your time and range is so much all the things we can tell so that's one type that's called retrospective now there's another one which is real time it's called real time cgm or rt cgm in this real time cgm you get the meter also you get the reader also and you get the sensor you put the sensor take the reader any time you want to check your sugar throughout the day without one drop of blood being taken just take it morning you get up okay let me see how much in the morning now it's that much now some time has gone i've gone for my walk and come back now i want to check how much it is check it you see how much it is now i'm going to eat all right after eating i'll see how much okay check it you see how much it is by lunch time i've taken my tablets insulin is going down by lunch time i'll check it and then i'll eat you know and then similarly after food then the evening time then the evening snack or an evening walk or after dinner uh, 3 a.m. You suddenly get up in the night. And, oh, I'm feeling a little giddy. Let me see. Oh, my, oh, yeah. Oh, no, it's okay. It's not due to my sugar. I know immediately. Maybe it's my BP. So it changes your whole life. And this is called real time. And real time CGM, you can do it throughout the day. I would recommend CGM being done at this time because if you keep your sugars throughout the day under control during this time, and we'll be happy to help you if you need a CGM to be put or interpretation or help with the drugs or anything you want, just let us know and we'll be very happy to help you there were a few others can you put them up pankaj kumar gautam do elaborate about gestational diabetes during pregnancy okay so gestational diabetes gestation means pregnancy and diabetes gestational diabetes means pregnancy induced diabetes normally this comes in the second trimester because the baby has to grow a little bit due to the hormonal changes uh, that occur due to the pregnancy human placental lactogen and the growth hormone and the all the other uh, hormones in the body which get changed due to the pregnancy, particularly the human lactogen, uh, human placental lactogen. What this does, every pregnancy, leave alone gestational diabetes, every pregnancy, what happens is these hormones, they oppose the action of insulin. They are called anti-insulin hormone. It's just that in the body, we have so many hormones which are anti-insulin and only insulin which will lower the sugar. All these will increase the sugar. Insulin alone will uh, lower the sugar. So they are, they are matching. They're actually anti-insulin hormones. So during pregnancy, what happens is that these hormones increase. So insulin resistance develop. That is normal. Every pregnant woman will have normal. But in the case of people who do not have this gestational diabetes, the moment insulin resistance comes, their pancreas will produce more insulin and that will overcome this resistance and therefore their sugars are normal. More insulin resistance, more insulin will come. More insulin resistance, 
more insulin will come. More insulin goes in, more insulin will come. And therefore, they never have high sugars. They don't have gestational diabetes. But now imagine when that pregnancy insulin resistance is happening, you have a weak pancreas. How weak? Because your father or mother had diabetes. And therefore, when you're born itself, you had a mild genetic defect. Till now, without that insulin resistance, you're able to manage. So you didn't have diabetes. But now the insulin resistance is demanding more insulin from your pancreas. Your poor pancreas is already strained. It is now trying to put out more and more insulin is trying to put out. But it fails because it cannot take the load. Suppose I'm a weak fellow. Okay. I hope I'm not so weak. But let's say I'm a weak fellow. Now on my weak body, you now put big weight on me. What will happen? I'll collapse. I can't take it anymore. I'm not a Hercules to you know take all those weight. So the moment you put that big weight on me, I'll collapse. Similarly, when this pressure comes on the pancreas, the pancreas gives up, is not able to produce enough insulin, and the sugar starts going up. That is gestational diabetes. It has to be treated because you don't treat it. The mother as well as the baby can get affected, but it's very easy to treat. You have to diagnose it. So today we have a rule from India government as well as from Tamil Nadu government and every government, in fact, says every pregnant woman should be tested for glucose because it is so common. In Chennai today, 25% of all pregnant women have gestational diabetes, one in four. Delhi, it's the same, one in four. So when we have such high prevalence rates, unless you test all the women, you won't pick up this one in four. This 25% you won't be able to pick up. And therefore, it's a rule now in the government that every pregnant woman has to have a glucose done. That's what I'm saying now. Let every Indian get a blood glucose done wherever possible so that COVID we can prevent. That is exactly the same principle that I'm trying to say for this June, make June as a diabetes control month. That's exactly what I'm trying to say as well. So to continue with the gestational diabetes, so if you manage your diet and exercise, about 80% of them can be controlled with diet and exercise. 20% of them will need medication. Usually we give insulin during pregnancy. Sometimes a drug called metformin is also used. They also do quite well. We have shown in a very big study called as a WING study. What is WINGS? Women in India with gestational diabetes strategy. It's called WINGS. In this WING study, we showed that if we, con if we diagnose the women with gestational diabetes and we control them well, they do not develop any complications. Their pregnancy outcomes are the same as a lady without gestational diabetes. That is a big victory for us. When you're able to show that even if you have gestational diabetes, your response, your final outcome is exactly like a lady without gestational diabetes. So that is a, uh, you know, the wing study got very much appreciated, not only nationally, but also internationally. So I wouldn't worry about gestational diabetes, but every woman has to be screened and whoever has diabetes has to be treated properly. So Jibin has a question. Doctor, is pulse oximeter accurate for diabetic patients compared to traditional oxygen device used in hospital? It's reasonably accurate. <clears throat> diabetes doesn't make any difference. Okay, so whether you have diabetes or don't have diabetes, uh, Jibin, the uh, pulse oximeter is reasonably accurate. But remember, these are handheld devices. And, um, you know, I have done on myself and all the 10 fingers I just tried, you know, as experimentation. It varies. You do it in one finger is different. You do it in another finger is different. You do it in the same finger twice. You don't get the same reading. There are accurate. It also depends on how, how you keep it, whether your hand is, you know, uh, warm or it's cold hand, uh, if it's wet. So many things can affect the pulse oximeter. But having said all that, if you do it correctly, it will give you some information about the pulse, uh, about the oxygen saturation. And uh, in these times of COVID, if you find your oxygen saturation is going very low, it is one of the things which can help you whether to go into hospital or not. And they typically say below 94, you have to be careful. And below 90, you definitely have to be in hospital. Uh, so from that extent, I think everybody has now got a pulse oximeter. But remember, its accuracy is not 100%. Sometimes it can, uh, it can go differently. So Lata Venkatesh wants to know, is the risk for people with type 1 and type 2 diabetes uh, different for COVID. Uh, yes, uh, Lata, that there are some, uh, the, there is a higher risk for people with type 2 diabetes. And I'll tell you why. If you take the average type 1 diabetic patient, it's either a child 
or a young adult. If you take type 2 diabetes, it can be a young adult, middle-aged adult, or an old-age person. So age makes a very big difference between type 1 and type 2. Secondly, in type 1 diabetes, is only an insulin deficiency. So glucose is high. You give insulin, it will come down. In type 2 diabetes, there are many other defects. There is an insulin deficiency. There is an insulin resistance. There is metabolic syndrome. Hypertension can be there. Uh, this lipidemia or cholesterol or triglycerides can be very high. Your good cholesterol, HDL, can be low. Okay, uh, All these are part of, uh, and most importantly, I said older age group. So if you have all these factors there in uh, type 2 uh, diabetes, the risk, the risk for COVID-19 and getting worse outcomes is more than in type 1. Because having said that, in type 1 also, if it's poorly controlled or you have kidney disease or you have something else, then it is uh, the prognosis is not very good. But by and large, uh, my uh, you know patients with the children and young adults with type 1 diabetes who got COVID, they have all recovered and uh, they have not had any uh, problem touch wood. Most of my type 2 patients have also recovered. You know, I'm very happy that 99% of them did very well, including people of older age group because the control was good because the HbA1c was good. Uh, that's the reason why I'm actually launching this. I'm saying it's not enough if I just, oh, you come to me, I treat you, and then I make you okay. That is not the thing. I want to go beyond that. And I want to go to take it to the country and say that, okay, you don't have to come to me. You don't have to, But I still want you to be good. I want you to be healthy. I don't want you to have a side effect due to COVID-19. I don't want you to develop mucor mycosis. And that's the reason why we wanted to start this uh, kind of a uh, program of uh, June 2021 being the diabetes control month. Uh, so Mohammed Mahmood Ali wants to know, uh, please discuss liver causes of diabetes. Uh, that liver and diabetes have a, a bi-directional relationship. If your diabetes is not under control, it can lead to fatty liver. The, the triglycerides keep increasing. The triglycerides will go and get deposited in the fat and you can develop fatty liver. Fatty liver can also lead to insulin resistance because why? Insulin is a place where insulin is supposed to, uh, uh, liver is a place where the insulin is supposed to work. Okay. Now, if the liver is not healthy, there's too much of fat there. That insulin, which is supposed to work there and burn the glucose there inside the liver, cannot function very effectively. And therefore, you develop insulin resistance. When you develop insulin resistance, your sugar levels start going up. You develop, uh, you know, all the metabolic uh, things. So fat gets deposited in different places, and therefore the liver has a close relationship with diabetes. So what should you do? Number one, control your diabetes well. We're back to square one again. We're talking about control of diabetes. Number two, make your liver healthy. How do you make your liver healthy? By removing the fat. How do you remove the fat in the liver? Exercise. Exercise more. We don't have specific drugs as yet for the liver. There are some, but they're not really proven. But if you do regular exercise, if you reduce your weight, if you cut down on the excess of carbohydrate and excess of bad fats, the unhealthy fats or the saturated fats, if you're able to cut these two down and take more protein and take healthy carbs, the complex carbohydrate, brown rice or brown, uh, you know, or whole wheat, these are healthier than white rice or refined wheat and so on. And fat, monounsaturated fats, the fats which come from nuts, seeds, and the healthy vegetable oils like groundnut oil, mustard oil, these are healthier fats than saturated fat, which comes from coconut oil or palm oil. or These are saturated fats uh, or vanaspati, which is trans fat, even worse. We have hydrogenated oils. These are all the deadly ones which could damage the liver. Uh, of course, too much carbohydrate also gets converted into triglyceride. Triglyceride will get converted into the fat. But basically, exercise, reduce weight if you've got obesity, uh, you know, do eat healthy and uh, keep an eye on your weight and reduce it. If you do that, your liver will be healthy. Pradeep Mahapatra, blood sugar testing at home during COVID, is it correct and to what extent? Glucometers are reasonably correct. I mean, they have they've improved over the years. I can say 25 years ago, maybe if you said glucometers are not uh, very accurate, uh, maybe you're you are right. 
But today we have got local meters who can give you almost the same value, the plasma calibrated, and they can give you almost the same value as in a lab. Therefore, I would say that it's uh, something like a life-saving thing. You can keep an oximeter at home, pulse oximeter, and you keep a glucometer being a diabetic. Uh, this is a much more proven thing, and you should do that. <clears throat> Suganta Nano, I'm 25. I got diabetes. Uh, I'm on diet. I do exercise, yoga, walking, yet my diabetes is not controlled. What to do? Obvious, Suganta. The number of people who are controlled, I know... Excuse me. So I know like that, like many people, uh, uh, you also feel that if you control it without medicines, it is good. Remember only 5 to 10% of people can be, probably 5% can be controlled without medicines. Diabetes is a progressive disease, whether we like it or not. However much you read on social media and tell you it's not progressive, we will do this, we will reverse it for you. One day you come, uh, one guy was uh, advertising some oil. And says just put two drops in thing and rub it and your diabetes is gone ha oh, great i would have imported the oil and or got, got the oil and given it to every one of my diabetic patients and changed my specialty i would have become something else i would have uh, gone to become psychiatrist or something else uh, why should i treat diabetes i just put the oil on everyone and gone diabetes wiped out from india and now i can switch specialty i hope it cured the uh, uh, you know mental illness cancers some more oil, you know, put another two drops, cancer goes. Put another two drops, blood pressure goes. Put one more drop, then heart attack goes. For every disease, we had one oil, one drop is enough, you know, and then you can do that. You know, don't get fooled by all these people who talk nonsense in social media and all that. And don't allow your health to go because of all that. So if your sugars are not controlled, what are you waiting for? Waiting for COVID to come? Waiting for myocarmycosis to come? Think of all that, uh, Suganta, because you, you must see the price that you pay for not controlling. Then people say, I'll tell you this. People say, controlling diabetes is costly. Controlling diabetes is costly. I'll tell you, not controlling diabetes is costly. Not controlling diabetes is costly. You'll say, how can you say that? Not controlling diabetes is costly. I'm not taking my medicines. So it is cheaper, no? If I don't take your medicines. Yes. Yes. For one or two years, it is cheaper. What happens when your kidney gets affected? You have to go for your dialysis. That costs you what? 2,000, 3,000 rupees per dialysis. You have to do it three times a week. That's what? 6,000, 9,000 rupees a week. Into four, 24,000, 30,000 rupees a month. Into 12, 4 lakhs a year. Is that costly or taking your tablet is costly? So not treating diabetes is costly. Treating diabetes is not costly. Because if you control your diabetes, you prevent all the complications. The complication of diabetes is bypass uh, costlier or is your uh, metformin and thing costlier? Tell me. So treating diabetes is not costly. Again, that's a myth which you have to get rid of. Can we cure type 1 diabetes? Vijay Kumar, I'm Vijay Kumar, I'm waiting for that day. Yes, we can cure type 1 diabetes, but not today. We are waiting for it. We have I've been waiting for 50 years uh, and I'm confident that I hope before I die, uh, di type 1 diabetes will be cured. But if you ask me today, can you cure diabetes, type 1 diabetes? No. Nobody can cure type 1 diabetes. After 100 years of insulin, we have made people with type 1 diabetes live up to 60, 70, 80, 90 years in good health. That we have achieved with insulin. But nobody said that you can stop the insulin and then, then we'll be back before banting and best days, before 1921 uh, uh, days. And don't be fooled if uh, somebody tells you that I've got this herb and that herb for curing type 1 diabetes. In fact, the Research Society of Study of Diabetes in the RSSD, a national body, is now doing a full-fledged uh, campaign uh, to dispel these. Because I know children have died. They're getting on well with insulin. Then some quack calls them and says, stop insulin. And then they give them some lahium, some this one, some herb, something. And one month later, their child is dead, you know. Please don't do it. It's murder. You know, please don't do that uh, because we want our children to live healthy and to be all right. So answer is short answer is no. There is no cure for type 1 diabetes. There's no reversal of type 1 diabetes. There's no prevention of type 1 diabetes. You can't even prevent it right now. Okay, it's going to come. It comes. But what we can guarantee is you can have a full and healthy life. You want to live up to 100 with type 1 diabetes? Yes, it's probably possible. You can have a full and healthy life, but we cannot cure it. And you'll have to take insulin. No two ways about it. Mir Saim, uh, my father has HbA1c9, postprandial 250, fasting 150. 
is on metformin, glycoside, experience, diabetic emergency affect COVID. You are saying it exactly what I've been saying all along, isn't it, Mirsain? His sugars are high. His HbA1c is nine. I've been saying seven, seven, seven. Diabetes control month. You are you are actually telling this audience that what I am saying about diabetes control month is correct. From what your father's case, you're saying he had diabetic emergency. He was on two tablets, still not controlled. Okay, so sometimes you have to hit hard and you have to get it under control, and that is the whole aim of this diabetes control month that I'm saying. So if you control it well, probably wouldn't have gone into diabetic emergency. Inshallah, I hope he is doing well now uh, with Allah's grace. I hope he is better now. Uh, but, uh, you know, take care. And at least from now on, see that if he has come out of it, please see that he is immediately under control. If you need any help, let us know. Lakshmi, good afternoon, sir. What's the incident mucor mechanism control diabetic? It's very low, Lakshmi. It's, it's very low overall. See, 12,000 cases in India sounds like a huge number. But think of 70 million people with diabetes, 12,000 is, is a very small number. Work out the percentage. It will come out very, very small. And this 12,000 is a huge number. It should not have been there at all. So in controlled diabetes, I would say it's zero. I have not seen mucor mycosis. All these days, what happened? So all my patients were controlled. Did I see mucor mycosis? It's virtually, of course, if you have been still taking steroids and taking something else, something else, uh, you know, unnecessarily producing it can come. But if you control well, forget about mucormatos. It should not come with God's grace. Should we check our sugars daily fasting PP? Depends, uh, Samida, Naveen, Verma. It depends. In some people, you have to check every day. If you don't check, you can't take your insulin. You cannot take your tablets. And if you have high glycemic variability, that CGM that you put shows that your sugars are going like this, you have to check. There's no other go. Of course, you can always put a CGM and get away with it. But there are others who don't need to check daily. Why should they check? All my patients don't check daily. I don't even tell them to check. In fact, tell them reduce your checking. But they'll keep on testing and then worrying about one day, one sugar will go up and they'll get paranoid. So I'll say, cut down. Don't do your testing. Okay. So, but maybe twice a week or once a week or something. So for each patient is different. I'm not saying every diabetic patient do six times a day. Not necessary. But if it is needed in your case, you can do it. Raja, Raja. COVID affected last May 6th and recovered in diabetic 10 years. When should I take the vaccine? So May 6th, you have recovered. I would say two months, Raja, because uh, there is some danger of uh, if your COVID has not completely settled down and there's some inflammation still in the body, going and poking once more with the vaccine can be dangerous. But I think after two months, uh, definitely you can take. Three months is very, very safe, but I think two months should be okay. Surely, nutrition clinic. Yes, sir. Please cover post COVID steroid induced high blast plasma glucose. Father having 350 post pandemic. Can this be controlled? Medicine only. Taking insulin is not feasible to him. What can I say? Blood sugar 350, you know, and uh, is not feasible for him. What is not feasible? Anything is feasible. Man can go to the moon, you know. You think taking insulin is not feasible? India has sent, uh, you know, rocket all the way somewhere. And uh, you think taking one small poke, small, you know, three-year-old children are taking it now. You know, they can take it here, take it there, something. You have to take it post-steroid-induced and high sugars. and At least for a short time. If it is really steroid-induced, uh, it will come down. And then afterwards, you can stop. I stop insulin for so many people. doesn't mean once on insulin, lifelong insulin. Wrong. Myth. It's wrong. Complete fake. You can take insulin for just one week, two weeks, one month, and then you can stop. Gestational diabetes. We give insulin for one or two months. After the delivery, we stop. Even the diabetes goes away. So insulin is not addicting. Don't use that word, addicting. That's for ganja and for smoking and for alcohol or any other drug abuse that you use. That is addiction. What is not needed in the body. Insulin is life-saving. It's saving your life. So it's not addicting. Don't use that word. It's very allergic to me if you use the word addicting for diabetes completely wrong also so i would suggest take it for some time talk to them and you know when it has to be used it has to be used okay so i'll give you an example suppose uh, you know there's a big fire okay unfortunately i'm sitting here let's say suddenly i see a fire there is also a fire extinguisher also in my hand you know or there is water i don't want to use this water i don't like you know using fire extinguisher it's, it's not a good thing. It's not a good habit. 
so i will not use so what will i allow the whole house to burn down huh? you are supposed to use something when you when you need it if you don't use it when needed then why have it at all you need not have it at all isn't it so we should use it when it is needed prasad tetali eating food with dal increases regularly increasing diabetes it's not the dal which is increasing prasad it's your rice or your chapati that is carbohydrate the dal actually helps to bring down the uh, you know the make it more nutritious more fiber more protein it's actually good for you but uh, eating too much of um, refined carbohydrates rice in our country or uh, wheat that's the one is increasing so cut it down cut it down take more dal take more fiber take more vegetables take more green leafy vegetables take more of pulses bengal gram green gram black gram mushroom rajma add all that paneer add all that that will make it more balanced you can easily if you put a cgm you can actually see and say i've eaten this how much is going to go up tomorrow eat little less and do that or oh, now it is settled so this is my correct diet for me it become very easy are toddlers at risk of diabetes krishnan vaidyanathan yes uh, krishnan they can get both type 1 diabetes as well as a condition called neonatal diabetes so neonatal diabetes come below 6 months of age if any child you know is below 6 months of age and has diabetes please refer them to us because we are one of the few centers in the country which does genetic testing for neonatal diabetes advantage of that is once you do the genetic testing these children below 6 months of age can be treated with tablets you can stop the insulin and you can treat them with tablets if they have certain genetic mutations but after 6 months up to 9 months gestational diabetes uh, this uh, neonatal diabetes can come but after 1 year or 1 and 1/2 years or 2 years it is usually type 1 diabetes and they have to be treated with insulin so toddlers can get type 1 diabetes or neonatal diabetes there are also other genetic forms which can come some of the people are getting positive after vaccination yes not because of the vaccination but in spite of the vaccination that's because you are not yet protected you are not yet protected and therefore you have taken the first dose usually it's after the first dose it takes one month after the second dose for you to get fully uh, protected so after the first dose you are only like 30% protected then the virus, the epidemic is going so fast that you can still get it even after the second dose before you get fully protected you are still prone you can still get it even after one month after the second dose when you are fully protected supposed to be you can still get it why because the vaccination whether it's covid shield or it's covaxin is supposed to be about 70 80% effective what does it mean 20% of people don't have any effect with the vaccine only 80% are covered we don't know which 80% unfortunately but 20% it doesn't have any protection the vaccine is not able your genetic makeup is like that so you can still get it even after the vaccination that is the reason why we don't know whether in the 20% or we are in the 80% so wear a mask follow all the precautions until the last case of covid in india goes away or from the world goes away no more covid let who declare the last case is over you may say is it ever possible of course it's possible smallpox we eliminated from the world there's no smallpox polio almost eliminated okay rubella almost gone there are many many diseases like this which have almost gone it's not there not a single case of smallpox in the whole world how was it done through vaccination the last case was detected treated cured no more of this disease is there in the world it will come a stage will come i think in 2022 we might hear saying covid has gone forever until then wear the mask whether you are protected not protected take one vaccination doesn't matter you still have to take it Tarsin Chako, hi Tarsin. What is the risk of COVID for Modi type as compared to uh, type one, type two? The risk of COVID is the risk is the same, uh, Tarsin. It's not that type one people have more um, risk or type two. You probably mean the risk of serious disease. As I said, in type two, it's more. I think type two has the highest uh, risk, followed by type one and Modi will be similar because Modi people are thin. They don't have uh, the features of insulin resistance and so on. so modi will be more like type 1 as far as the serious covid is concerned uh, raja raja next question covid affected last that's finished uh, should i take kiliwalan dr kiliwalan how much does it help uh, continuous glucose monitoring temperature and temperature 
insulin oh, i don't understand continuous glucose monitoring temporary insulin oh yeah oh, got it for temporary insulin uh, so uh, if you are on covid and on steroids uh, you have been put on steroids continuous glucose monitoring help it's wonderful for that in fact what i have done is um, i popularized this i said look you are going to give steroids sugar is going to go up now remember after the steroid suppose the steroid is given in the morning 10 o'clock your sugar will start going by about one o'clock or so. It will go up until about say seven, eight at night, and then it will co start coming down. So you know which time of the day your sugar is high, and at that time alone you can give the insulin. Just one shot of insulin to cover that. CGM will help you in that. Otherwise, you're guessing. You don't know when it's going up, when it's coming down. You have no idea. CGM is beautiful for that. I uh, appreciate that, Kili. Well, one, it's very correct. Uh, Maninder Kaur, after first dose of Covax, I got Covax first. How many days should I wait for my second dose? So you get over your uh, COVID completely and then wait for minimum two months and then you have your second dose. Covax normally they say four weeks, but in your case, remember when you got COVID, you also got immunity due to that. Antibodies will come due to the COVID also. So COVID itself has given you some protection like a vaccination. So now you can afford to wait for two months and then take it. Ria Danai, please advise measures to cure pre diabetes Oh, it's uh, not very difficult, uh, Ria, uh, to cure pre-diabetes. Pre-diabetes is one stage where you can cure. Okay, reversal. Don't use the word cure. You can use the word reversal. Usually pre-diabetes is associated with overweight, obesity, stress, uh, lack of exercise, eating wrong food. Uh, all these things produce uh, pre-diabetes. Reverse your lifestyle. Start jogging, start walking, start cutting down on carbohydrate, eat healthy. If you're overweight, lose uh, weight and try to bring it uh, down. You'll find your pre-diabetes going away. Pre-diabetes is on the wall. You can either jump this side and become diabetic, or you can jump that side and become normal. Jump on the other side by losing weight. If you now put on another 5 kg in weight, you'll be pushed to diabetes. Then it's difficult to reverse. Once you get to diabetes, it's difficult to reverse. In pre-diabetes, it's easy to reverse. So you should try to do that. Ratnam Ramesh. Oh, Ratnam from Singapore. Hi, Ramesh. Dr. Ramesh, nice joining. Nice to see you joining from Singapore. Diabetic past 7 years, H1 7.2. Last month, bypass completed advice about precautions uh dr ramesh i think so with the bypass you can aim for a little better hba1c control because 7.2 is still high i don't know how old you are i'm not going to ask you also but um, unless the doctor says some contraindication i would aim for 6.5 or something it will definitely help uh, the heart also because remember uh, people say i've got bypass so now i'm okay yeah but the bypass can get blocked remember but keep your risk factors under control, your cholesterol, LDL, blood pressure, sugar, everything. Put your HPNC, put a HPNC below 6.5. Put the patch and see that your time and range is at least 70%, if not more. Okay. Uh, using Rajiv Janjanam, I've heard twin health program using diet can help control reverse. I'm not going to talk about particular programs, uh, you know, because each one has their own programs. Um, it's not twin health program alone it's told you what did i tell you just now that you can reverse your diabetes uh, i told you and uh, you know whether you do it with cgm or without cgm or, or and so on you can do that in early stages diabetes is reversible and it is definitely reversible because it's just come and therefore you can reverse it back the longer you delay five years 10 years 15 years you go on to insulin you go on to that it becomes more and more difficult to reverse. It's not that you cannot reverse, but it becomes more and more difficult to reverse. And remember that even after you reverse, okay, now you put on weight, you'll go back again. There is no doubt about it. So reversal is good. Try to get that. It's not easy for people to maintain throughout their life, you know, that kind of a thing. And for reversing diabetes, about 10 to 15 kilograms in weight you have to lose. How many people lose 15 kilograms and stay there with 15 kilograms lost forever? Those have extreme willpower. They can definitely do it. At high sugar, using Giptulio, Empagliflozin as extra sugar, is it safe in the long run? Um, Abhishek, uh, there is that little bit of risk of developing urinary infection or genital infection when you take uh, drugs like uh, this Gliflozin, the SGLT2s. But remember that these have fantastic effects on sugar, on blood pressure, on weight, on heart, preventing heart failure, preventing heart attack, preventing uh, kidney disease, slowing down kidney disease, 
and probably on the liver as well. They have, they have 10 advantages. And therefore, uh, the way it, the extra sugar through urine is how it works. It takes the sugar from the blood and pushes it out through the urine. That's a mechanism of action. You cannot change the mechanism of action. So these drugs have become like super, super uh, heroes now. Uh, so you should take them. You must be careful that you don't develop. Drink a lot of water first. And otherwise, they're very good. And ask your doctor who's treating you. I'm sure he'll be able to tell you. Will gabapentin affect the kidney? Is it the correct drug for peripheral neuropathy? Gabapentin may not affect the kidney, but um, it works on nerves and works on the brain. Therefore, long-term use of uh, these drugs uh, are better avoided, uh, Rotarian Thiruvasagam. Um, I think you can uh, use them for short term for treatment of neuropathy, but if you can get off the drugs, they're good. They're not painkillers. The painkillers and NSAIDs, these are the ones which permanently damage the kidney and some of the antibiotics, severe antibiotics, very heavy doses. But otherwise, gabapentin is not very dangerous from kidney point of view, but take it for a short time and then you can stop. You mentioned diabetes is progressive. I'm diabetes have control and for 50 years, eventually I'll need insulin. Perhaps when? Not necessary, J.I.R. It's not necessary that you will need it. Of course, it is progressive in a general sense. But I can show you people who have finished 50 years um, and uh, have not needed the insulin. I have people who are today 96, 98 years old who got diabetes when they were 50, 40 years old, finished 56 years, still on tablets, doing well. So you may be one of those. So why do you presume that you will need insulin? You may not. And if it comes to that, there are fantastic insulins available. So let's cross the bridge. When we come to it, why think of the bridge which is not there? Let's think of the bridge and cross it when we come to it. Keep it under control. That's most important. Don't worry about the future. In the future, will the third world war come? Will something else come? Maybe it'll come. If it comes, we'll face it. Uh, COVID came, no? We're facing it, no? So like that, we'll face it. What are the early signs of diabetic coma? There are no early signs. Diabetic coma is a very late uh, stage, uh, Manish. You will start, uh, you know, having nausea, vomiting, some drowsiness. Uh, headache uh, and then uh, you know the sugars will go very very high ketones will come in the urine these are all signs that diabetic coma can come and today we should not even talk about diabetic coma nobody i'm talking about controlling diabetes very well and reversing it where's the question of diabetic coma only if you're totally neglected you will develop diabetic coma somebody who needs insulin type 1 stops insulin you'll go into diabetic coma why should you stop continue it okay is it safe for 14 years type 1 to take vaccine not in our country, uh, Saima. Mullah, it is not approved in our country, only above 18 years of age, 18 to 45 only, government is talking about. Trials are going on. Once it comes, we can take. Right now, uh, better to avoid. Ananda Padmanabhan, a patient with Trishur visiting a hospital, Chennai Center, now due to the pandemic, could not visit the past one year uh, taking medicines. Can I visit in August? Yes, uh, Ananda Padmanabhan, I think you can come by August, I hope. The uh, already now within a week, I think the lockdown is going to be lifted. So take precautions. Uh, I hope you've taken your vaccines. Take both the vaccines. Come and have the checkup. Wear your mask and all that and come. We are treating patients. It doesn't uh, do anything. You can. We'll plan for you to come. Write to us and we'll fix the appointment for you. Is metformin safe? Will kidney get affected? Appa. So at least somebody asked that now. For the last 50 years, they've been saying the same thing. Metformin will produce kidney disease. Metformin will produce I'm still waiting for one case of kidney disease due to metformin. In my lifetime, I hope somebody, one of you proves to me before I die that metformin produced kidney disease in one patient. I'd like to see if one patient at least gets it. So far in my life, in the 8 lakh patients that we have treated, not even one has developed kidney disease. Total myth, total bluff that if somebody tells you all that, metformin is the safest of all the drugs for 60 years. It has been around 6, 0, 60 years. And so it has absolutely no problem. Why people get confused? Now, if the kidney is very badly affected, we'll say avoid metformin, take insulin. So they think metformin is bad for the kidney. No, it's not the other way around. Okay. It's not that when certain things are wrong, you take insulin, certain medicines are better avoided. That's what we say. But it's not because metformin produce. Listen to my uh, metformin videos. I have three videos on metformin. I think one of them has crossed 1.2 or 1.5 million views and all that. So please watch that. Is taking B-complex safer for pandemic? No real proof for it. There is some views that taking too much of these B-complex and zinc, in fact, zinc, they say, is probably linked to mucormycosis. Unless it's absolutely needed, don't take it. Okay. If you have a vitamin D deficiency, take it. 
If you've got B12 deficiency, take it. These are only two indications you have. Or if a doctor tells you you have vitamin E deficiency, you take it, something like that. Otherwise, simply take, don't take uh, take B complex. It will, you'll only produce costly urine. Your urine will become very costly because you're taking a costly tablet. Your urine also become very costly. So not worth taking it. Mona Nagulavar. Sir, my husband has grade one fatty liver, high uric acid, H1 for COVID return. Should we have to take medication? I don't know his blood sugars. You only said his HbA1c. I don't know how old he is. What is his body weight? I don't know his fasting blood sugar. I don't know his postman blood sugar. So I can't tell you that he has to take medication. Uh, at 6.4, it is still in the pre-diabetic range. Probably you should try weight reduction. I presume from what you have said that he's overweight. I'd be very surprised if he's not overweight because uric acid, A1C, fatty liver all tells me, I can even guess, it's probably about 75 kilograms. Mona, just taking a guess. Okay, uh, so uh, 70 kg, 75 kg. So if uh, that is so, if he reduces the weight, I think he will reverse it. He's classical case for reversal. You can completely reverse. Kalyan Srinivasarao, uh, black fungus infected mostly diabetic patient. It's absolutely true. The whole meeting I've been talking about that only. And that's why I'm declaring uh, June as the uh, diabetes control month because black fungus comes mostly in diabetic patients. <coughs> Can I use pen humalog mix instead of humalog 25? Why not? I mean, uh, one um, will control your after breakfast better, the humalog mix. The other one will control your after lunch better. So whatever your doctor tells you, you can take. Rajiv Janjanam, no, do diabetic medication cause insulin production inhibition over time? Not usually. Not usually. But if you overuse them, for example, the sulfonylurea group of drugs works on the pancreas and it's pulling out the insulin little by little. If you injudiciously use it, if you use overdose of them, and instead of taking a diet, now you increase your dose of drug. It will pull out more and more insulin. And of course, your insulin level can go down. But today, we have drugs of other classes which actually improve your insulin secretion. We've got at least two or three different types which can improve your insulin secretion. We do what is called a C-peptide test. C-peptide test tells you how much insulin production. So we've shown people's C-peptide improve after treatment with diabetes. So I'll be happy to help you regarding that. Uh, Jatush Sri, if we have microalbuminuria, does it mean we have kidney disease? If you have persistent microalbuminuria, microalbuminuria is one of the signs of um, early kidney involvement. But the good news is that unless it is persistent, which means that twice unless you prove it, it may be a false positive and may go away. The other good news is it is completely reversible. If you control your diabetes well, if you have high blood pressure, you control that well, microalbuminuria can completely go away. The stage after microalbuminuria is called macroalbuminuria. That is also reversible. Okay. The stage after that is kidney failure. Okay. That is not reversible to a large extent, but you can slow it down. And if you have read my autobiography, uh, you know, uh, making uh, excellence a habit, which is a bestseller on Amazon, uh, just type Dr. B. Mohan, you'll find the book. I've described uh, cases where even after kidney failure came, one of my patients uh, lived for 30 years without dialysis just by controlling his diabetes and blood pressure. And so even that is uh, possible. Kajal Agarwal, uh, I am not diabetic. I'm taking dexamethasone, health issues. I'm taking uh, inhaler, formanide inhaler. Is it safe for me to take vaccine? Ask your doctor who's treating you for your asthma. Um, I presume you're taking, uh, I don't know why you're taking dexamethasone. Inhaler uh, steroids are very safe. It doesn't uh, uh, cause a mild risk of fungal infection, but otherwise uh, that is mostly candida, not mucormycosis. But uh, generally it is okay. But uh, dexamethasone, as much as possible, if you can reduce it, Kajal, it will be better for you. Ask your doctor why you need it uh, to be taken. Kabilan, 53 years old, maintained for five years, food control, h c between 6 to 6.4. How long it's possible to continue without medicine or without insulin? Maybe even lifelong Kabilan. I've seen people like you who have been uh, controlled just with food for 35 years, 40 years. It didn't progress because they were very strict and very regular. And also because the genetic defect was not very strong. They had only a mild gene somewhere, mild diabetes went away. But there are people who can progress very fast 
in six months, I've seen pre-diabetes going to 300 blood sugar. And all you need is a steroid or a COVID or something else to trigger it. A stress, anxiety, stress, depression, anything can trigger it. So as long as you're maintaining it normal, good enough. Keep it like that. I'm not saying you have to take medication, but keep watching it. It may progress. You never know. It may progress any time. That's why glucose control. That's why to keep checking. Okay. And remember, even the pre-diabetes is as prone to heart attacks like a diabetic patient. So the clock for heart attack starts ticking in the pre-diabetic stage, not in the diabetic stage. So that also has to be kept under control. So Kesh, is it true that Novo Rapid works better in carb diet and Act Rapid works better in low carb diet? I, I don't think so, Sukesh. Uh, Novo Rapid works a little faster. Uh, it's also much more expensive than Act Rapid. Uh, so Act Rapid, you have to take about half an hour before your food. Whereas no rapid, you can take about 10 or 15 minutes before food. That's the only difference. I don't think it makes much of a difference otherwise. Can diabetes be a symptom of any disease? I don't know what Mohammed Irshad meant by can diabetes be a symptom of any disease? Well, any disease is worsened by diabetes. Let me put it that way. Uh, so uh, if you have diabetes, um, Make sure it's under control so that any other disease will get under control. Dr. Jalda Ramesh, nice to see you, Jalda. Can you throw some light on post-COVID diabetes, please? Jalda, you treat diabetes too. Therefore, um, post-COVID diabetes is of several types. First one can be just steroid-induced. And as a steroid uh, dose gets reduced, most uh, of them do well, and they don't have any uh, issues after that. In some people who have had their diabetes under good control, post-COVID, the diabetes goes for a six. And it's very difficult to control their diabetes. And so each patient is, is different. The COVID itself may produce beta cell damage. There is a new paper which came out in Nature Metabolism, which shows that COVID inside the pancreatic beta cell, showing damaging, how it's damaging the beta cell. So in such rare cases, it can be even permanent damage due to COVID. But usually they settle down. At the same time, I've had people who have had COVID who come out and the sugars are absolutely OK. Nothing happened to them. COVID, because biology is so different. Each person is so different that um, there is no one size fits all. Babika Hingwala, overweight, HPNC 10, fasting 259, postprandial 380, was COVID, had COVID two months back. Where do I stand? What do you think, Bhavika? Where do you stand? With a blood sugar, you're overweight. HB1C is 10. I'm talking about 6 and 6.57. Your HB1C is 10. Your fasting should be 100. I said it's double that, 250, 249. Postprandial should be 150, 160, close to 400. You had COVID also. Where do you stand? I don't think these are good results at all. And you're also having thyroid look into it and get it under control before you end up in some other complication mucormycosis or some deadly infection before thing please get it under control this is the glucose control month this is for you this month is for you Pavika. please get it under control for my sake okay uh Khadar Valley, i'm living near guntur how will i approach you online diabetes report well you have a branch in guntur uh Khadar Valley, so you can Go to one of our branches if you like. If you want to consult me online, I'm sure we can put there's something coming up here. Appointments dash gop. That is Gopalpuram at drmohans.com. Uh, you just send me a mail and uh, I'll be happy to uh, get back to you and do teleconsultation if you like. So I'm happy to do that. Rajeshwari Virapmeni Vanna. Is real time CGM available in Hyderabad facility? Yes, of course. Of course, it's available in all our Hyderabad branches you write to us to this thing and we will get can even de get it uh, delivered to your home and we can get it done rama sai can you tell us about hypertension diabetes well people with hypertension are more risk of diabetes people with diabetes more risk of hypertension this is essential hypertension or idiopathic hypertension which is like a separate disease like diabetes but hypertension can also come due to kidney involvement in diabetic patients when the kidney gets involved that's called secondary hypertension due to diabetes. So that uh, can also occur. 
and uh, both of them uh, they are uh, you know very bad friends if they get together hypertension and uh, diabetes uh, two bad friends getting together can cause havoc so better to keep uh, both of them under good control both the fellows need to be you know tamed and kept uh, inside a cage both the diabetes and the hypertension and uh, then you will not have any problem but 50% of people with diabetes have hypertension so we can easily control it amina aiman has advised pen humalog 25 but that's not available oh so the other way around now 50 uh, how much points i don't even know your blood sugars amina how can i tell you how much you should take to send me all your blood sugar readings and so on i'll be happy to uh, help you abhishek saxena sir i also have lot of skin tags okay abhishek without you telling me your weight can i guess your weight must be above 65 kilograms okay uh, i'm just guessing without even uh, asking you normally it's associated this is a sign of insulin resistance okay and they are not warts they are actually skin tags and you get them like that if you have if you're overweight i'm not overweight so i don't have skin tag but if you're overweight you'll have skin tags all over hanging out like that then you'll get what's called as acanthosis nigri cancer brown kind of a velvety patch will come all these are signs of insulin resistance they can be controlled by active exercise cutting down on diet uh, and all that can help you to do that uh, rajkumar is essential to take multivitamins along with metformin i'm taking metformin two times a day well uh, rajkumar um, b12 deficiency has been described uh, subclinical though not very much but in uh, with people with b12 uh, with the uh, metformin so if your b12 level we can measure your b12 if your b12 is low you can take b12 supplementation if you are on metformin otherwise essential multivitamins are not needed uh, with metformin uh, rajab khan rauter can mother feeding woman take covid vaccine and can they give feeding immediately after taking the vaccine i read recently i am not the expert in this but i read recently in the newspapers from the obstetricians uh, who treat that today vaccination is allowed in uh, for uh, people who are lactating women who are lactating uh, pregnant women can take it and lactating women can take it that's what i read uh, let her ask her obstetrician and then take it i think we have gone on for one and a half hours now and i didn't expect uh, so many people and so many questions at an odd time uh, you know on a working day on a tuesday morning 11:30 the only reason i did it was i thought you know i'm launching the diabetes control month for the whole country uh, this is entirely my uh, idea and i you know raised this issue and uh, i was just hoping to promote this each one of you if i can uh, you know have a request uh, for each uh, one of you uh you spread this message uh, uh you know just so that uh, you know the message about controlling diabetes being very important if you have picked up a few points as i said uh, you know uh, spread that also but about this diabetes control month and how by controlling diabetes you can control covid as well as um uh, make it uh, less severe if you get covid and also mucormycosis so please spread this around uh hitesh bisht uh, you want to consult me you said you have himachal mandi Uh, that's the uh, you know the uh, thing for appointments there's a telephone number there you can call there or there's an email uh, id there one of those two if you do that my team will be happy to help you i missed one from dr vinod babu uh, which is preferable for steroid induced uh, hyperglycemia dpp4 plus alpha or basal insulin uh dr vinod babu i think insulin would be needed for most patients with uh, steroid uh, induced hyperglycemia of course steroid doesn't increase the sugar in a small percentage of people maybe very mild then you can probably control with dpp4 inhibitor and so on which is supposed to be also a very good drug during covid as you know but uh, once there is steroid induced hyperglycemia nothing like insulin because the tablet simply will not be able to uh, control it uh, during that time and don't be afraid that or oh, during steroids they gave therefore my whole life i'm going to take insulin no myth wrong false so after 2 th- 3 weeks when your steroids come down the dose of insulin come down and then we can stop it okay so one thing if you're going to spread uh, you know all over the country is that once on insulin not always on insulin once on insulin not always on insulin tell people you can take it for short time as needed and then you can get out of it also okay 
I think that's about it. And I would like to thank all of you for your patient uh, hearing. And uh, please send me your comments or suggestions. If you all want me to talk on any particular aspect uh, and produce uh, more videos on anything, which about 90 videos are already there. And I've tried to cover everything that I could think of, but I may not know what you need. And therefore, if you think these videos are only three minutes, four minute video. So if you think that on any particular aspect, you want my opinion, I'll be more than happy to write to you. So please do uh, share your feedback. Most importantly, please stay safe. This epidemic is not over. We made, we had the hubris. We call this hubris. When you become arrogant and think nothing will happen, nothing will happen. And then it happens. That's what happened to India. Okay. Let's not make another mistake. We cannot afford to make one more mistake. We have lost too many lives in the second wave. Let us not have if a third wave come. Let us be prepared for it and say, if it comes, we'll tackle it. And let's tackle it in a positive way, in a well organized way, because we now know what to do. But most importantly, take care of yourself. Take care of your families. Have your vaccinations. Don't uh, uh, you know talk about one in million, something happened. You're not one in that one million. OK, pray to God and then take it. Nothing will happen to you. And that's the only protection you have. And even after that, continue to wear the mask. Don't say CDC said you can stop it. That is for CDC and that's for US, not for us. We are in a different stage of the epidemic. We have to continue with, with the mask and so on. And most importantly, everybody with diabetes, pre-diabetes, please continue to test. Please increase your testing and keep your sugars under very good control. I pray for all of you to be safe and wish you all the very best. Thank you.